Hello, and welcome to Real Person Reviews. And I'm Sam, and I'm a real person. And today I want to talk to you about Princess Loot Pixel again. It's a, it's a computer game, it's a PC game, it's a Steam game. It's on Steam, I don't know where else it's available. As far as I know, it's only on Steam. It could have been a Flash game somewhere else before it was on Steam. Or, I don't know. I didn't, you know, I didn't dig deep into it, and I'm sorry. But I do know it is on Steam. Alright, and a few things to know up front. Other than that, I that there's a written review you can check out before, after, or instead of this video review. Um, I'll link that in the description. I'll probably link both the the Steam review and, you know, the Hub World one I always post there, you know, the usual place. So, you know, you can pick either one, but if you navigate through the Steam one, you can maybe find the game easier through that, maybe. And, uh, you know, that kind of thing. You know how to navigate shit. I don't need to link 7,000 things to find the game and the page and whatever the fuck on there. You just follow the links, you'll find things. You guys are not new to the internet. And, uh, I think that's all I need to do for the upfront stuff, so, uh, yeah. Let's do it. So, Princess Loot Pixel Again is a, is an indie game. Um, and it is a roguelike platformer dungeon crawler uh, with some RPG elements. That's how I'm going to characterize this. Um, Control-wise, I mean, okay, story-wise, let's start there real quick. Because there's not really much of a story. You can pick, play through the story, and you'll just go through this really quick thing where it's like you walk in and then, oh, there's a, there's a king that gets kidnapped. And you, the idea is you're saving the king. It doesn't really explain it with words, or even a very good uh, visual. It just kind of shows it very cheaply, uh, and uh, there you go. Because the story's not really that important, I guess. Um, then you start playing. Um, you can pick from a variety of classes uh, of characters. Each one has their own, you know, starting stats, as well as some of their own natural abilities, and they all have their pros and cons, their strengths and weaknesses. Um, your controls are simple. Um, for the most part, there's um, the ability to double jump. You can walk around and you have a melee attack. Um, depending on your character, you might have a pro some kind of projectile attack, either as your basic attack or as some kind of activatable type of spell type of thing going on, um, which is uh, usually actually consumed by its own sort of ammunition, usually. Um, depending on if you have that kind of skill or not, it, again, the, the, each character has their own kind of thing, so it could differ from them, like, one character I know has, like, a, like, a shield thing going on, and that shield can take damage, um, I don't know, you have ability to block instead of having a projectile thing, necessarily, it, it's, a, it's, you know, it depends on your character, but typically it's probably gonna be some type of spell thing that is special to your character, um, and, uh, you also, uh, you start with bombs and keys. Um, you use bombs to fight enemies, blow open, uh, secret walls, and a variety of other things as you go through. The keys are generally used to open locks, whether they be on doors on the sides, doors in the background, or opening up chests. Um, those are typically what keys are for. Um, I believe you can actually use bombs to open up some doors and stuff. Well, I don't want to give too much away, but there's some secret stuff to be had here and to find out as well. Um as you go along. Uh, you can also pick up these, uh, I guess you have health, and depending on your character, I mean, you usually will have at least some amount of mana. Um, and you'll be able to pick up these different artifacts. Um, now, uh, I, I guess quickly before I bring up the artifacts, um, I should bring up some other stuff, because those are a little complicated. So you can pick up, um, some armor, um, with the looting. You're running around killing enemies in these different rooms. The whole place is just basically, I don't know if it's randomly or if it's considered procedurally generated. I don't really know the difference. I'm sorry. But you go around this big uh, castle place and the idea is you go up these different floors. Um, there are, I guess, how would you put it? There are four floors, each containing two levels. Um, I think that's maybe how you would put it. Or four levels containing two floors. Um, whichever way you want to put it, but I think you'd put it floors containing each has two levels, basically. Um, so there are eight places you're going to, essentially, every time you go through, if you make it through. Um, 
So what you get is always going to be different. You don't know what's going to be in these rooms, what assortment of enemies are going to be to fights, or what kind of traps or are going to be in there, or loot. Sometimes you walk in and you'll have to fight a combination of enemies and traps uh, and hazards. And there's there's you know, some traps you trigger by hitting on the floor. Some of these things are hazards, like having these big spike balls moving around or fire being shot around. Um, and... Uh, it, Sometimes you just walk into rooms with no one in them, and there's actually just some kind of treasure to get, and uh, or maybe some secret to find. Um, a lot of different kinds of rooms for you to go into, like a uh, roguelike would have. Um, you can also have a chance of getting chests, you know, getting loot out of them. Um, you can get gold, which is you'll mostly get out of chests, but sometimes you can destroy other things in order to get some gold and some good loot out of them. Uh, the gold can be spent in the shops, which is another thing you can go to. Um, every level has a shop, um, and, uh, so I mean, you'll always be able to at least check out what's in that shop if you find it, um, and, uh, you can buy a variety of things like weapons, armor, uh, uh, potions, and, and, uh, artifacts, um, there's also sometimes some vending machine type things that are hanging around where you can put in money to buy keys, health, mana, bombs, or it's a random machine that could have any of those in there, and you're not sure what you're going to get. Um, and, uh, whew, the, the armor and weapons you get generally are always going to be better than the ones you already have. It's always going to be an upgrade to them. Um, uh, except for maybe on rare occasions you'll find something, you know, like if you find the shop earlier and then you find more weapon, just weapons and armor from looting, um, just from random, you know, different chests and such, then going back there, it's possible that the things in the shop are going to be just as good or worse than what you have now. And that's the only instance I've seen where it's actually not better to just get the next uh, actual upgrade for your weapon or your uh, armor. Um, which is where the more RPG element comes in, I suppose, as you're making progress with that constantly. Um, Sometimes you even find rooms where you can sacrifice um, some of your health in order to get power-ups um, that are there. Um, so that's also also a choice. Um, all the stuff in the shop, of course, will cost gold. Sometimes you can find secret shops in these other rooms uh, that are spread throughout the, uh, the levels. Um, you know, just if they happen to spawn there. Um, and also, uh, then there's, I guess, the potions. Um, can be any variety of effects. Um, it's randomized every time you play, but as soon as you drink one, then you will be able to always identify that potion's effects later on if you find another one, um, which is the typical roguelike type of element. Um, there's also um, the artifacts. We'll, we'll go over those now, because I'm ready to talk about them now. Uh, the artifacts, um, there are basically three different types of them. There are, um, there are some of these... Uh, uh, consumable artifacts, I guess you'd call them, where they take the same slot as the consumable potion would take. Um, you know, like, you would, uh, use it once and it does a specified thing, and these are always identified when you're seeing them. Um, so they always have a fixed thing that they do. Um, then there are artifacts that work like spells, where you put them on this slot where you'd be able to put certain spells. Uh, typically they're things like projectiles, but they might be something slightly different than that. Um, and they typically will always be using mana. Um, sometimes your special ability, I think, might use mana, but usually your innate ability doesn't, uh, because it's not an artifact, necessarily, so, um, yeah, uh, just so that's a little cleared up. And then there are passive artifacts, which basically are things that you get, and they're just permanent, uh, upgrades that you get until the, you know, for the rest of your run. So you get things like maybe you get a coin multiplier so gold is worth more or maybe you'll get something that increases your luck or your attack or something. Um, there's a variety of them of those too and all these things kind of mix together um, and that forms the whole roguelike randomness elements of it. Um, at the second, the second room of every floor, which is the last room of every floor, last level, of every of each floor has a boss. The first floor could have a one of two bosses show up, but the th uh, second, third, and fourth floors have set bosses you'll have to fight. Um, and uh, beating the last boss on the fourth floor uh, means you win the game. Uh, it's done, and then it asks you if you want to play again, and you can you know 
exit it out of there and go and pick a different character or pick the same character or whatever you want to do. You can play again or just stop playing if you'd like. And that's pretty much the game. I mean, there's not a lot more to say about it except for experiencing it, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I actually strangely liked it a lot. It reminded me a lot of uh, The Binding of Isaac. Um, and... Well, it reminded me a lot of Rogue Legacy initially, and a little bit of Binding of Isaac, I guess, where um, it has a little bit of elements from both. Um, obviously, the gameplay and the visual style, and I mean, you know, it's a lot more pixelated, and you know, it maybe it seems a bit more primitive than something like Rogue Legacy. It certainly isn't as grindy, um, which a lot of people would enjoy. Um, that it's not, <laughs> but like, it also has some like the things like the way some of the keys and the bombs work. It seems like it's very Binding of Isaac, the giving your health to to this this thing to get more power ups. A lot of it seems very inspired by Binding of Isaac, and I believe there's a little uh, a nod to the Binding of Isaac in there. Um, so it's uh, it's one of those where like yeah, if you if you like Rogue Legacy, it's 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 kind of similar to that in a very simplistic, stripped down way. Um, and I mean, it was just it has actually some pretty catchy music too. I mean, I, I like the music of it. Uh, the 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 soundtrack is one where it's like, yeah, it, it's not amazing or anything, but it's catchy. And, I don't know. I like that. Um, I think a lot of the fun in this game also came by actually trying to do the achievements. There was one just use achievements for beating it with everyone and doing a few other tasks in there, and most of the achievements are pretty fun to do. Rarely do I try to get all achievements in a game because they seem like they're not really possible. These totally seem possible, and there were fun reasons to just keep playing the game. I may, I may have kept playing it anyway just to try and beat it as each character, but I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Um... It is fun to play as the different characters to try the different strengths and weaknesses and see if you can deal with them, see if you can get a good run with them, or what works with a character and what doesn't work as well with a character. Um, to th and thinking about how to both play as each of these characters and how to try and build them with the different things. Because you probably don't want to try to play the same way you'd play, like, say, an archer as you would uh, a warrior. It's probably not going to pan out quite as well if you try to just do the same thing. Um, and, uh, I don't know, uh... It's just like the little ins and outs of it. Like you kind of discover, like, oh, if I do this, like I can interact with with this obstacle in this way or this enemy in this way, and I can, you know, get this buy, buy this thing now and and get this thing later. Like, th there's a lot of like uh, I guess little things to discover going throughout the game that like I found enough things where I was still like, I multiple times I was like, all right, I've seen everything this game has to offer, and then I found something else. And I was like, oh, I guess there's more. Um, and trying to encounter all of the artifacts that are in the game is not really impossible. It, it might take a little while, but eventually you get it because there's not a crazy amount of them to the point where it's it's unlikely you'll get all of them. Even if you play a shit ton, it's possible that you never need to see something just by pure happenstance. You know, so like it's it's nice that it's kind of smaller, more compact in that fashion. Um, I really like the decisions you have to make too. I think it was a fun way of like it's not overly complicated. Um, or super grindy or anything, but it's like, it has some fun decisions to make, and, and it's about making decisions and dealing with consequences. Um, it's not straight about, like, progressing and powering up and getting and seeing what you get for stuff. It is a lot of decision making, like, do I want to use this bomb to open this, 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 uh, this wall here, or do I want to save it and open this door over here? Uh, or do I want to wait and see if there's something else to use this on here, or wait till if it's better on another floor? Like, do I use the key on the chest or the door? Or do I wait for the next floor for something better, possibly? Um, you know, and, like, uh, do I spend the gold now to get some better gear or to get this, like, potion or something? Or do I instead save it up and try to get something better that's worth more later on in the next shops? And, um... I... I don't know. I, re I really like that. Um... Like, it just, it was a lot of, at first I've almost felt a little annoyed, like, man, I'm, I'm in these places, like, I don't have any fucking keys, I need to unlock this shit. But then I was like, well, it's about, it's just about consequences, too, and it's about dealing with it. I was like, shit, I used my keys on this other floor, and now there's this shit here that would be really good to use keys on. Or, like, I had one where I was in the last couple uh, levels, and, like, I had all these fucking you know, keys, and it's like, there's no, there's no locked doors here anymore, what the fuck, I don't I have all these keys, and I can't use them on anything. But it's just like you deal with the consequences, you kind of have to deal with the hand you're dealt, and it's about overcoming that, and it makes you play in ways you maybe wouldn't normally play, and I think that was actually really great. And also, it's easy to pick up and play this and put it back down. It's not the kind of game that is really intensive, it makes you really grindy, 
you know, about it like Rogue Legacy, and also doesn't make you feel like you're going to forget fucking everything if you don't keep playing it, like Binding of Isaac did that to me a lot, where it was like, I don't remember what anything fucking does, I'm just going to have to figure it out again. And this is a lot simpler, it's a lot more clear for a lot of that. Um, though it could be more clear, some of the descriptions on these artifacts does not really explain what they fucking do, which I can kind of understand for the mystery of it in the game, and being like, what the fuck does, you know... I got safety pins. What the fuck does that mean? And, like, later you're like, oh, I just, like, walked on spikes. I, I am not hurt. I, I guess they do that. I don't know. Like, it's kind of cool to just kind of figure it out. But I would think that would it would be better to maybe put it in the depository screen just to show us all the, the, you know, the artifacts you've gotten. Maybe have a little bit longer description on that screen to show you what it does. Because you've already got it, so you might as well be able to figure out what it is without having to go to the forums or something or look up a, some kind of guide or some shit. Seems a little silly that you would have to go to that much trouble. And some of the you know descriptions just could be worded a little better to make you understand what the things do rather than trial and error. Like, maybe it means this. Maybe. You know, I don't know. That was something. Um, and, uh... I don't know, could use a few more sound effects. Uh, the soundtrack was cool, but it, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of randomly plays the, the songs. Uh, and there, there maybe could have been, I guess maybe been more songs if it's going to play that much. Or, like, maybe have songs be about, like, for different levels or different floors or something. Because they're not really connected to anything. They just all kind of play at random, so it's like, I don't know. They lose a little impact in that sense, even if they are kind of catchy. Um, I mean, visually, it's fine. It, 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 I liked it. Ellie was amazing, you know, pixel art, but it was charming enough. It worked, you know. I didn't, I didn't think it looked bad. I wasn't like, what is this? When I'm looking at stuff a lot of times, so it was like, it works well enough for what it is. It knows what it's trying to be. Um, uh, the ladders were a little glitchy. I had problems where sometimes I would, whenever I, after I jumped on a screen, I would just automatically fall through all the ladders whenever I walked on them. But sometimes when I would walk up a ladder and then like I would get to the top, like I couldn't go back down the fucking ladder. I would have to like step off of it and then step back onto it and then go down or like jump and then I could go back down. This is a weird glitch thing like that where you think I'd be able to just hit down or down it. That would kind of maybe got me hurt. Hitboxes are a little weird too. That's maybe a more major one. These other things are kind of nitpicky, but that feels like sort of a big one where it's like you have to get used to the hitboxes and they can be pretty deceptive. It's not just like pixel touches pixel, you hit them. It's like sometimes you have to be pretty far into them before their fucking like weapon hits them. And sometimes they look like, look like there's enough space between you and them and they just, they just straight up hurt you. So, you know, you have to really learn what the hitboxes are in here, which you kind of shouldn't have to, I guess. Um, and, uh... I, I don't know, like, that's, I mean, another thing that's not really a complaint, but just something to bring up is that, like, I, I guess it, it, it's going to happen with something like this. I just kind of want more, you know? Um, um, oh, yeah, a quick one before I say this part. Achievements. One of the achievements requires you getting three artifacts, which sucks, because there are three specific artifacts you have to get. And you have to get lucky because you have to have them spawn. You have to be able to get them, whether they're behind a wall or something, or they cost gold or whatever. You have to be able to get those. Um, and you have to do it all in one run. And that means eight floors to hopefully find and be able to get three artifacts. That's kind of a lot. Um, I was able to do it. And it's not too crazy because there's not tons and tons of artifacts, like I said. But it still is kind of a pain in the ass to get. And it could end up, by random chance, taking you a fucking really long time, even after you've done everything else. But yeah, like it's one of those where it's like, I kind of just want more, you know? And that's what's going to happen with any game like this, where you have a lot of fun, and it's like, I, mean, I guess that's all the stuff in it. It's like, I would like to see more, maybe just add it in as an update. And you know, like, you just put in, like, like things, you just it's, it seems like it's easy enough to expand. You put in more characters, you put in more enemies, you put in more room types, maybe some more different trap types and obstacles, and definitely put in more artifacts um just put in more stuff in general and uh and then it just, and it just becomes you know it's basically the same stuff just with more in it and you could do that with an update you could do that with dlc you could do that with a sequel there are ways to do that but um that's not really a complaint so much as uh i'd like to see this i guess um i don't think what this is uh, is bad um, maybe rough around the edges, maybe could use a little work, but overall, I mean, it wasn't a bad time. 
Um, even for what was there, I mean, you can nitpick all you want on it, but it still was very effective in what it did. Overall, um, I really liked Princess Loot Pixel again. It, w it gave me a taste of the roguelike stuff that I liked from Rogue Legacy and a bit of stuff from The Binding of Isaac. Um, and it put it in a fun, like, package I could pick up, I could put down. I played it a bunch. I ended up playing some quite a few... I don't remember what the hour count is on it, but I, I think it might be... I'd have to look. I, the point is, I got quite a bit out of it for... I mean, I got it for free. Um, but it's only like three bucks. It's worth three bucks. Uh, if you think that's too much, you can get it on sale, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, it's good. Um, if you're a fan of Rogue Legacy uh, and elements of The Binding of Isaac, or if you like the idea of like a puzzly... Not a puzzly, like a platforming uh, roguelike kind of thing. It's sort of a dungeon crawler in the process. Slight RPG elements. If that sounds fun, if the stuff you saw on the screen looked fun, check it out. It is a pretty fun game. Um, and, you know, it's on Steam. I don't know. It works with the gamepad. I like that. Uh, it's a good time. I don't know. It's it's hard to be like, no, don't, unless it just looks meh to you. I mean, it's definitely better than it looks. So I would say maybe don't necessarily judge it just on how it looks. But I guess it's a little deeper than that. It's deceptively deep for that, but not overly like complex. It's not one you have to dedicate a ton of time to. And I think it it just fits that that nice uh, nice little boost I needed of like I need to play something that's not a franchise game, and I want to play something that you know has the cool roguelike thing going on, but isn't gonna like eat my life away. And it and it fits that, and it does well. And here's hoping there's going to be updates or DLC or a sequel or something. And, uh, you know, in the comments, leave whatever you guys thought of it or if you think you might get it or not. I don't know. I would be interested. I don't know if anyone's really... I haven't heard anyone talk about it before, but, uh, hey. Hey, man, I, I can't be the first. I can't be the only one to do a freaking YouTube review on something like this. Can I? You do you do YouTube search for me and then leave in the comments if I was or not. I'll uh I'll go now.